Hello, how you doing? Welcome back to my kitchen, or hello for the first time. Hope you're all doing really well. I hope you've all had a fantastic day, or I hope you're all about to have a fantastic day. Um, today, we're gonna make cinnamon rolls. And the reason we're making cinnamon rolls is because in Morrison's, um, I found this, which is like active yeast, um, which means basically you don't have to have a packet of powder and then put it in something and stir it and all that kind of stuff. I don't believe there's a great deal of difference between this and the packet stuff. Um, what I have noticed is when I've been looking at recipes that include active yeast or fresh yeast rather than like packeted dried yeast, um, a lot of the videos show that the dough would be a lot fluffier, um, a lot nicer. That just might be the videos, it might just be the people that are making it whatever, but I've never tried it before, I really want to try it, so I'm going to try it. On Twitter, I put a post up asking if you wanted me to make bread rolls, cinnamon rolls or pizza and everyone voted, what everyone? It was like a 50 something percent, wait I'll just tell you. Uh, there we go. So, cinnamon rolls got 53%, dinner rolls got 9% and pizza got 39%. So cinnamon rolls won by a fair amount. In total there was 1,766 votes. So thank you very much for voting, I appreciate that. And yeah, so we're going to make cinnamon rolls. I'll probably make pizza in the future. Um, a lot of people suggested making pizza rolls, so that would be cool. Um, so just basically make pizza dough, but make them in like a cinnamon roll shape. Fill them with like tomato and cheese and all that kind of stuff. So that sounds really cool, so I'll maybe give that a go. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of that. I don't know if you will because it'll be very similar to what I'm going to do now, I suppose. But let me know anyway. There's not really much else to say. I'm going to now show you the ingredients we have. Um, what I'm going to do is probably just show you the ingredients for the dough, then show you the ingredients later for the filling, and then show you the ingredients later for the topping. Because um, if I show you it all together, it'll be very much a, just a mix of bowls that look very similar, um, and it's to save some confusion. So yeah, I'm going to move the camera to here and show you all my ingredients for the dough. Hello again. Um, before I show you these, if my hand here looks a bit like it's got leprosy, um, I just got more ink done to it, so it's a little bit scabby, but this hand will not be going in this dough, so do not panic. Anyway, the ingredients are here. What we have is 440 grams of sifted flour, it's just plain flour, not self-rising. In here, I've already put one tablespoon of salt. This is my dry yeast. So the dried yeast that I showed you had 42 grams in the packet. This yeast is only 25 grams, so I've just basically cut it apart. You can see it's a bit flaky and stuff. It's very odd, it's very foreign to me. I've never used it before and I'm very excited. That is 25 grams of fresh yeast. In here we have 240 milliliters of lukewarm milk. We have 55 grams of melted butter. This is just two beaten eggs. And these are two bowls of sugar. One has five grams of sugar and the other has 30 grams of sugar. Um, this is golden caster sugar and this is everything that you will need for the dough and don't forget You do add salt as well, but it's in this flour already that I've put in I just didn't want to have a bowl dirty for like some salt, you know Okay, so that's all the ingredients we need to now for the dough. I'm just going to start working on the dough I'm going to move the camera back around again so that you can see how to work the dough into a dough or work all these ingredients into a dough anyway uh, But before I do that, I'm definitely going to put my peony on Okay, so now we're ready to rock and roll, we're just going to start making this dough, so I'm going to move it back over. So first what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to activate this yeast. So, let's get the yeast in front of us, and I'll zoom you in. So here is our yeast. What we're going to do is just crack it up a wee bit, break it up. It's so strange, it reminds me of like a dried mushroom paste of some kind, I don't know. This is very odd. So I'm just going to try and evenly smoosh this and it's sort of even sized crumbs. It's got that distinctive horrible yeasty smell, so that's great. To this you want to add your five grams of sugar. Give that a wee mix round. And then what you want to do is add one third of your lukewarm milk. So I'm going to eyeball one third. Probably a little more than that. Yeah, it's probably about that. And then basically just stir it into a paste. If you are one of those guys that's got a tiny little whisk, 
I'm jealous of you, and this, that's, this is the prime moment for your tiny little whisk to shine. I do enjoy tiny little whisks, they're good for hot chocolates and moments like this, but unfortunately I do not have one. So I'm going to move to the spatula, just because I feel like the spatula can maybe grab some of those lumps and flatten them down a wee bit. This really does smell pretty bad, but it's yeast so it's going to... I've always wanted to be one of those people that makes their own cultures and keeps it in the fridge and all that, but it just seems like looking after an animal, like having to feed it, check on it and stuff, and I mean I've already got three animals, I don't really want any more. I think Buddha, Bronson and Marcus are enough. So what I'm doing just now is just squishing these little tiny bits against the side so that I can ensure that it's all fully mixed. Now I don't think having these wee bits matter, but that's just who I am. I'm a squishy kind of guy and I just want to squish it. That is your yeasty mixture. So we're going to leave it alone now, let the sugar and the milk do its thing with the yeast. So we're going to move this over here. Okay, so in the corner here you might see I've got a bag. That's just a bag of plain flour because we might need some more flour because this might be too wet. But we'll see, but you just have flour to hand. So we've got our flour and our salt mixture here and we're just going to start adding everything else. So we're going to add our sugar, which that's the 30 grams that's left. Give that a wee stir through. Once that's combined, we're going to add in our eggs. We're going to add in our butter. Give it a wee mixy rooney. And then we're going to add our yeasty, milky, sugary mixture. I like the spatula for stuff like this because I can like stab through the mixture which I think is quite good at breaking up all those big lumps. Again, you can start using your hand, you can use a metal spoon, you can use a knife, you can use a fork, you can use a wooden spoon, you can do what you want. If you have a hook for a hand, you can try that, whatever. Anything that actually works for you, just do it. But I prefer this be spatula guy. So, you can see that it's starting to come together a fair bit now. Um, so now we can start adding the milk. So I'm kind of left with this now, which is a very wet mixture. I'm just going to throw in the rest of the milk and make it wetter, which seems strange, but that's what we're doing. And I'm going to put my clean hand in this bowl and just start smooshing it around. We need to get all the um, sort of active yeast and the sugar and the butter and all that and the eggs mixed around a fair amount. And you're also trying to obviously stretch the gluten in the flour and make a dough. Now obviously you can tell we will absolutely be adding more flour to this mixture, but you're just sort of slatting that about at this point. So I'm just getting my fingertips and scraping the bowl as well as kind of stretching the mixture with my hand. And as I'm doing this, I'm running my thumb through it because sometimes I can feel like a wee hard lump and I think that's the yeast. And if I find any wee bits, I'm just squishing them. So you can see the difference that's made. This now became very elasticy rather than a big wet goopy mess. It's still a big wet goopy mess, but it's very elasticy. See? So what we're going to do now is with our and that we can't put in the flour because it's been tattooed. We're just going to start shaking flour in vigorously, which is probably a terrible idea, but that's what we're doing. Ideally, you should have a non-tattooed hand and be able to put your hand straight into the bag and just take a pinch of it at a time. But unfortunately, we're not that person today. So what you're looking for is a mixture that's, well, first off, let's scrape it off my hand, shall we? So we'll get the spoon and we'll scrape all the mixture off my hand so that we know where we're, where we're at with the actual mixture in the bowl. What I was going to say before I looked at my, my big swampy dough hand was that we're looking for the mixture to come away from the sides but still be sticky. And with all that mixture on our hands, we were never going to tell whether or not it was sticky because we already had too much stuck to us. You know what I mean? 
So clear your hand first. Again, this would be easier if you had two hands. We've got all the crap of our hands, or majority of our hands. We've flowered it a wee bit. And now we're just gonna start pulling it away from the sides because we wanna see that it comes away clean. Which you can see, this one is, like you can see it's starting to pick up now. It's not clean because it's still wet. But it's now starting to come away. So that's kind of what you're looking for. I'm going to put a little bit more, oh, now I need to put my hand in. I'm going to put a little bit more flour in. And then that should be me. That was probably too much, but that is what it is. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this sort of idea. So once I get it off my hands, we're going to leave this to rest for 10 minutes. Just leave it in the same bowl, it's no big deal. So yeah, this is what we're left with. We're going to leave this in the bowl now for 10 minutes and we're going to make the filling. So I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so here is the ingredients for the filling. It is basically butter, sugar and cinnamon, right? It's not that, it's not that hard, it's pretty simple, it's pretty good. So we have 70 grams of butter, it has to be at room temperature. We've got 100 grams of light brown sugar and we have cinnamon. So what we're going to do is, we're going to measure the cinnamon, it's two tablespoons of cinnamon, so I've got a tablespoon sort of measurement thing, um, so I'm just going to put that straight into the butter, I hate these things, I usually just eyeball it but I mean that looks like one, hello, oh shit. And that looks like two, and then we'll, we'll, we'll do a wee bit for good luck, okay? There we go. Two! I'm just going to use this spoon to smoosh this into a kind of buttery cinnamon paste. And make sure to fling hundreds of it outside the bowl. Um, if you don't do that, you're not doing it right. So I'm just using the back of the spoon just to mix this together. There we are, cinnamon and butter mixed together. And then we're just going to dump all the sugar in. And then do pretty much the same. Here is your cinnamon sugar. So just keep this to the side now and we are about to roll out our dough. Okay, so we have our dough. It's been like 10 minutes because we've made our sort of pasty stuff that goes inside. We're now gonna roll this out into a sort of rectangle shape for the shape of our cinnamon buns and let's do that now. So I'll just gather it away from the side for now. Take a big handful of flour, sprinkle my surface. And then just try and pull it away. Ta-da! Right. something very satisfying about slapping dough. Does anybody else feel this way? So let's start to dough. So we want to try and keep it in a rectangle-ish shape for now because it's going to be harder to try and make it into one if we just roll a big bloody circle, you know. So Now, if you can hear my uh, puppy in the background crying, it's because he is a moany bitch. And this is what he does. He just cries all the time for no bloody reason. So, please don't phone the RSPCA on me. He's just moody. Ideally, you want this like 30 centimetres by like 45 or 50 centimetres. Um, I am not the kind of person to measure things. I am absolutely just going to wing it, but what else is new? What I do like though is that there's tons of air bubbles in this, even as I'm rolling it, I can see them all popping, which is probably not what you want, but hey ho. Right, so I'm just going to squish my fingers into it and try and make it a rectangle shape. If Bronson could stop crying, that would be excellent. Yep, Bronson, I'm talking to you. Right, so yeah, just basically do what I'm doing and try and shape it into 
what you want it to be. Give it corners, you know. That's kind of what you're looking for. Now I've been too busy making the dough to realise that it's not really focused on all of it. So, sorry about that. There you go, you can now see all of it. Apologies for the baking video that you didn't even get to see, but there we go, professional as always, you know. Right, I am happy with that. I'm going to start spreading my delicious goop onto it now. So, best way for this is just to get dollops of it. Some people put it all in the middle. I think that you're being a bit risky doing that because you don't want one roll to have tons of filling and one roll not to. So I'm just going to put wee dollops just ruining a bit. So that's about as much as I can get out of my bowl. So now that we've got our dollops, we're looking to just sort of evenly spread our dollops. This is quite satisfying. I do enjoy this part. You'll see that there's wee bits of sugar that are starting to show up. I'm okay with that. The thing is, light brown mascovado sugar is really, really tasty. It's really good for like being caramelizing and stuff when you're using it and stuff. But the only thing is, it can get like wee hard lumps in it, like that. And if you squish them, they will go. But with this recipe, I'm okay with them being there because the heat will melt them. So when you are eating a bit of the cinnamon roll, you won't come across any of those wee lumps. You, all you'll get is like a caramelizey bit of like dough, you know? It's not gonna be like lumpy and gross or anything. Um, that's what I would do in my sort of crumble mix. I would have this sugar because it adds a kind of caramel flavor. Anyway. So you can see, I'm obviously not the best at this, but I am trying my best to get it as even as possible and to all the edges. But I think that might be our lot. I would say we'll stop there. Now comes the fun part that isn't crap at all, is uh, rolling. So I'm just gonna start by tucking over these wee edges. And then I'm just going to start lifting with my thumbs because some of the dough is stuck to my counter, but that's okay. By just sort of thumbing it up, it's unsticking itself. And don't worry that it's not a perfect circle, um, sort of, as you're rolling it. Because, when we cut it, they'll flatten anyway and you're going to have to reshape them a wee bit. So, don't worry too much about it. So, I didn't put enough flour down, so that's my bad. So, I'm just using this wee handy tool that I got from Dunnell move that bowl out road. Um, I got from Dunnell for £3. I don't know how much they are online, um, but very cheap. Now I'm going to get to here and then stop and the reason for that is I'm actually going to put some water across here and seal it so when it rolls over it should fully seal. So I'm just going to put my thumb in it. You can put any finger you wish in it. I'm just going to put my thumb in it. Right. Smashing. And 
and it just coats it over. down a wee bit, roll it over again and there we go, big long cinnamon roll. So what you're going to want to do is cut these wee ends off because we didn't get cinnamon all the way to the sides of them anyway. Uh -huh. Now I do not have one tin big enough for all of them so I have two small tins. <laughs> so I am going to start putting these in my small tins. So we're just going to cut the ends off. As I say, there's like no cinnamon in that anyway. See? We're going to cut the ends off and then we're going to try our best to like evenly measure it. So I'm going to say like there's the middle, there's the middle of those. So I would say we probably get three out of every section. So that's my 12, you know. So let's go, excuse my big face in a way, I just got to see what I'm doing. So there's, oh see that's not so much, maybe. Looks like I'm getting a baker's dozen out of this one. I think I'll make that three, yeah. And one, two, three. Okay, so. People say you can use floss for this. I only have minty floss, so I'm not prepared to do that. Um, but if you have like non-minty floss and you want to wrap the floss around it and pull it, you batter in. And if you do do that, uh, send me pictures of your cinnamon rolls and let me know how they looked at this point. Right, so we'll take this tin, right? And we'll just take a wee cinnamon roll at a time. So all we're going to do is just make them round again. Make cinnamon rolls round again. You're just giving them a wee cuddle with your, with your hands. Just caress them gently. Now you might be thinking, those are tiny. What the hell, Sue? Well, we're going to make them rise again. So after this point, we're going to put cling film on them. My God, Bronson. His dad was just like, like inhale because he's breathing in his sleep. Um, yeah, so we're going to put cling film on them and leave them to rise for about an hour. and they should double in size. Honestly, you'll look at recipes for these and they'll tell you how many inches to keep them apart and all that kind of jargon, but can anyone really be bothered with that kind of mess? Because I tell you what, I cannot. I've got this wee guy, will we shove him in somewhere? Oh yeah, let's shove him in. Let's just, we'll squeeze all these guys down a wee bit. Right, we'll stick him in this corner. That's what I think, he's only wee. He deserves a wee chance, you know? Buddha. That noise. Right, so this is where we're at. This is all the cinnamon rolls we have. This is my thing from. So now that these both have cling film on them, we need to put them somewhere hot, like not hot, somewhere warm, like in a warm room. For about an hour, they should double in size. Um, so in an hour's time, I will come back to you. So you need to preheat your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Celsius if you've got a fan oven. So what to do is these need to rest for an hour. So like 55 minutes time, put on the oven um, just so that it's nice and preheated for these going in. So yeah, I'll see you in an hour. So you'll be greeted by me and the roaring fan oven that I have behind me. So yeah, I'll see you in an hour. Here are our cinnamon rolls after one hour. You can see that they have doubled, if not tripled in size. They are absolutely 
massive. So, just to show you how important the cling film is to this stage, the cling film is off here a little bit and this wee guy didn't do so great, but all the rest of them are huge. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. Um, all I did was put these on my computer chair, rolled my computer chair in front of my radiator and left them for an hour. So if you're looking for an idea for a warm space, that's what I did. So as you can tell, my oven is on as it is so loud and it's all you can hear probably. Um, so we're going to take this cling film off now and put these in the oven. Now these will go in the oven for like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it really depends on your oven. My oven goes quite hot, so I'll probably check on them after like 17 minutes. But these are going to go in just now anyway, and I'll see you in about 20 minutes or something. Roughly. These are my cinnamon rolls straight out of the oven. I'm quite happy with them. Now these actually came out after 15 minutes, not 17, so just keep an eye on them. Um, but yeah, I'm over in the moon with the colour of those in two seconds and I'll just put it closer for you. Here are my cinnamon rolls. Great colour. Um, now by looking at these, these went in the oven this way, so it looks like I get more heat in this corner than I do anywhere else in my oven because this looks darker, but whatever man. It's a rubbish oven anyway. But yeah, I'm really happy with them. So these are now cool in the tin and we'll go straight to making the icing. Okay, so for the icing you're going to need icing sugar or confectioner sugar, I think Americans call it, I'm not too sure. So in here we have 120 grams of icing sugar. We're going to get a teaspoon of vanilla and we're going to use some milk. And before you say yes, I do drink lactose free milk. No, Marcus does not. Okay, so let's get the vanilla on the go. So it says one teaspoon. I can't be bothered measuring that. So I'm going to put in about this much. <laughs> and we'll give that a wee quick study booty. And now we're going to add the milk. Now it says say two tablespoons. So we'll pour in that the now. See how that goes. Um, be really careful when you're making icing um, with this liquid and icing sugar because it's um, it needs very little liquid to be honest. So add small amounts gradually. Now with this you're looking for a runny consistency. Nothing that's like royal icing or anything. It literally just has to be able to be able to pour on top of the, the buns once they are fully cool. Put it on when they're warm, it'll just soak in and it'll be a big squidgy mess. So that is what I am looking for. It's like thick enough that it leaves a trail in the icing sugar, um, but not thick enough that it doesn't pour. So yeah, that is the consistency I'm looking for. And for ease, I'm going to use a little jug. So that is my little jug of icing. These are my cinnamon buns. Once these cool, we'll come back and we'll pour the icing on the buns. Hello again. Um, inpatient Sue here. So these are not cool, but they're not warm. Like I can hold like the pans. They're not like burning to the touch. They just have a nice heat to them. Um, it's not even a heat, it's just like, they're just not cool, you know? They're not as cool as they should be before I do this, but I am very impatient and I'm going to put my icing on them now. Because, you know, I've been doing this for a while and I, I really want to like, go play Stardew Valley. So, I'm just going to give this a wee quick stir. And then, Pour. Now the first dollop is always the biggest, so I like to find a corner. Oh, this guy's right, okay. So and you want to do sort of side to side motions.
Just making sure that you get every wee bun and no man is forgotten about in that one. And then, so, I've got pointed this left, so I'm going to go the other direction, just to make it look a wee bit fancy. As fancy as this can look, because it looks a bit messy, doesn't it? So this is why I prefer to use a jug, because I feel like you can get a good sort of decoration on the go. Another option is to dip a fork in and then shoot the fork around. So I'm just going to use the rest of this icing now. And they're going to go up and down in different directions. And what I'm also going to do is look for those edges that look a little bit maybe unsightly, maybe a little bit dark. And we're just going to hide them because we are professionals. Oh, I think my icing's done. Oh, that was a big gulp. Oh no. Oh no. I think we'll go back to this guy because it's further away from me. I think I've neglected it. Don't, know, don't want to be neglecting your buns, you know? All should be fair and equal in the, in the world of buns. Come on. There. Whatever's left on the knife, I'm just going to use the same. Smashing. So these are my cinnamon buns. They are all fully done now. Um, and now they can be eaten. And the risk of me not trying these and in the comments saying, well, you didn't try them, I'm going to try them. Um, what I will do as well is I'll try and get a good tear on one so you can like have a look inside. So, probably be better, or easier even, to do it with these ones. So let me get a tray. So I've got a wee sort of chopping board here and I'm just going to use these as a handle. Let's get a good tear on the go, shall we? So. They smell great. Marcus, come look at my cinnamon buns. Look. No, they look good. Are you try. You need to put it in my mouth. Hands on the way. But do you want this corner? Aye. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Why are you like aye? <laughs> You shoved it in my face. Yeah, but I was, you told me to. <laughs> Not like that. I didn't mean it like that. They're really good. They are really good, aren't they? Mmm. Mm. These are really delicious and realise that I've just been eating them without actually talking to you about them. But they're so nice. You know, as I eat them as well, they could probably be doing me like, maybe a wee bit of orange zest or something in there. Like, you could probably put raisins yeah. and stuff. What have you just done? I just broke it. It was fine. What is it? It's my wee magnet fucking dust thing for catching the dust. I was just giving it a shake to dry it off and the thing just fucking snapped. I've got a hot glue gun if you want that. No, 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 no. I'm just going to put it back in. The magnet should hold it in place. It'll be fine. Okay. Okay. It's alright. No, no. I didn't even need to shout. No, 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 it's alright. Yeah, as I was saying, um, the, these could be doing maybe not could be doing with, but they wouldn't um, they'd benefit from possibly having like some orange jet zest in there. Mm. I 
but honestly, they're fine the way they are. If you wanted to put more flavours in them, then these are the perfect recipe to do that with. Um, especially with that active yeast, that fresh yeast, I feel like that done me so many favours. It certainly cut out time, I think, as well. But yeah, I, I, it's, I mean, it tastes great. The actual dough itself is very like airy. There's a great texture to that. So yeah, if you want to try this with the active yeast, then I recommend it. At this point in the video, I'm now just eating in front of you, and that's a whole other level of like video. Um, it's not the kind of videos that I do. So what I'll do is I'll wipe my fingers off with all the icing and say thank you. So thank you so much for coming here to see me make cinnamon rolls. I really, really appreciate you coming here. There's some tap dancing dog outside now. Um, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to support me in any other way, I have a Patreon and I also have merch. All links to that will be down below in the description box as well as the recipe for these. If you make these at all, please send me pictures of what you make so I can retweet them. Uh, I love to see whenever you follow recipes that I do. Um, I actually love it so much. Um, so please, 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 please tweet them at me if you do do it. Thanks again for coming. Have a nice day and I'll see you later. Bye.